We live in an amazing time right now. You guys are so lucky to grow up to have this kind of technology. You have access to information that I never did as a kid growing up. Now, hopefully, after today and this week, you guys get inspired to be coders, and maybe when you grow up, you'll create the next piece of amazing technology or create a new game. I want to take a moment and let someone who works with coding share a little bit about what he does every day and hopefully give you a little bit more information. Would you please welcome Mr. David Helen? Thank you, Mr. Frick. Um, it is a privilege to be here today with you guys. We believe that fundamentally computer science is at the foundation of our youth. And while nine out of 10 parents want their children to learn about computers and technology, really only one out of four schools actually teach it. We are doing something called a week of, uh, an hour of code during this week. And um, we, as my company, we actually have a, a 10,000 volunteers who are going to instruct code during this week around the world. And there are tens of millions of students who are going to code, in many cases, in the, for, for their first time. So what we're trying to do is get the access to that technology and, the, and the, the ability to learn to provide that technology at an earlier age. We see the real skill gap begin at the ages of first through sixth grade, because if you start to, to, to go beyond that gap, people lose the interest and they kind of go in different directions with their careers. So, Mrs. Brown, based on the eager participation of your students and your wonderful uh, um, uh, request for this, Accenture, as part of code.org, would like to present a check for $10,000 to your school. So Accenture donated $10,000 as part of a grant in partnership with code.org with the intention of really making technology and how in learning technology more accessible to students. At an age gap when it's really important to generate that interest in some of our most talented youth. This money is for you guys. We're planning on having a space in our building called a maker space. We're going to design a room specifically for you guys to go in and create, design, engineer, a lot of fun things. Um, we want them to be able to create and design with their imagination solutions for real world kind of problems so that they can so be doing something meaningful and something real when they come into that space. So that it's a place for them to pursue things that they're interested in. Now this is Dr. Southwick. He also works for the district. He has volunteered to come on up and he's going to learn how to code today. We basically created a simulation of a dinosaur ecosystem and how a T-Rex would feed off of a triceratops that feeds off bushes and duplicate the spawn energy to the point where it, it, you have enough energy to create a, another T-Rex. I like how at the end of stages, how I get to make my own code and make the characters do whatever I want. So even though they had some problems they had to work out, they sat down, collaborated, figured it out, and eventually got to where it's working where they want to. Let's have a big round of applause for Sage, Adam, Austin, and of course, Dr. Southwick for being a good sport. The kids are totally engaged in it, and the teachers are too. When you come in, at first, some of them were a little hesitant because it sounds a little intimidating to do coding, but all of them have been extremely open and invited me in to help them kind of learn it so that they can do it with their kids. But the most important thing, I think, with the kids' involvement is that you don't really have to know it yourself for the kids to be able to do it. You can pretty much set it up, and then they can get on and teach themselves and teach each other, which is the fun part of it, and teach their teachers. 